install the insincorator. Hi, this is TH Colhain for Solar Cities, Ahmed Khalifa from Solar Cities behind the camera, and we are now demonstrating our insincorator porch biogas system. We've just installed the Insincorator Evolution 200, which grinds everything, including avocado pits. And it makes life very, very simple because what we do is, as we're making our food, for example, we can take our banana peels and simply throw them in the sink. If we are peeling oranges, we can take the orange peels and throw them in the sink. We put a little bit of, um, in our case, a little bit of warm water. and turn on the insincorator. It's actually very safe because it's just an air switch. There is no electricity, so you don't have to worry about uh, wires and things. Normally this would be mounted here. We haven't done that yet, so we keep it under the sink, but it's a simple air switch on and off. You can see that the unit is very quiet. And then we just um, put the food down. <coughs> So what happens is, is that there, the pump that is underneath the bathtub pumps the kitchen waste and all the gray water into this biodigester along with all the food waste. You can see the food. Oh, there's a piece of avocado. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's nice warm water. And that warm water filled with the food waste is feeding the bacteria that's in this digester. And that's the idea is that the bath and the shower water, the gray water, the sink water, the washing machine water, it all has food particles in it and it has soaps which are fatty acids and that warm water is pumped directly into the biodigester so that the bacteria can eat. The overflow from this then goes into the gas collector and then out to the trees in the garden. And in a minute we're going to use that to run the refrigerator so that we have a full cycle. We use the kitchen waste to power the kitchen. So this is the Insincorator Evolution 200, the top of the line series that grinds literally everything. Meat bones, chicken bones, fish bones, uh, pits of avocados and seeds, you name it, it'll grind it. Corn cobs even. And it's very silent and very clean. And it just the waste just goes right here. This is where the washing machine uh, water goes. So the washing machine water also goes through it. And then it just goes down to the drain. Now where does it go in our case? In our case, it starts out here and underneath we have two valves, one that goes to the regular sewage pipe, which we have closed, and one that goes to this sump pump. And the sump pump then, as you can see, goes out the back part of the bathroom wall. So this is the pump that's pumping all the water from the bathtub and the kitchen sink. In fact, all of the sinks are connected to this, the washing machine also. And in a few minutes you will hear this pump go on as it fills. The pump fills and then you hear it and it pumps the water outside. Every time you take a shower in the morning and the evening and you're using hot water, 
you're passing the hot water over your body for only a few seconds, and then you've lost all that heat. And we have a solar hot water heater and a gas heater downstairs, a hybrid system. But you've gone to all this trouble and expense to heat the water, and then boom, it's gone and you felt just a few moments of pleasure. In this case, we take that hot water, and it also goes through the pump, and the pump pumps it out to the biodigester to keep our bacteria warm so we can produce gas that we can use in the kitchen. Because you see all this wonderful steam that's being produced here. What a loss as you take a shower to just let it go down the drain. So we don't let it go down the drain. We pump it. See over here where the pump goes out. That's coming from that pump under the bathroom. It has a T that fills the gray water tank when we need to fill it for flushing the toilet. It also comes out here and goes along in this insulated pipe underneath here and up to here. And that is how we get the warm water from the shower, how we get the food from the incinerator, all of the soapy water from the dishwasher and all the food into the biodigester. And when we don't want to use it, this valve here closes and then this is sealed, and then the water instead fills the gray water container. So once I've sealed this, now my shower water can go in here. So generally I'll open that when I'm using the incinerator, so I'm feeding the bacteria with food waste. When this is low, I'll use just the bathtub water to fill this up so we can flush the toilet and do irrigation. Now there are some new considerations. Next time uh, when the spring comes, we're going to reevaluate. We're going to move the biodigester under here so that it's next to the bathroom so we don't lose any heat with this long pipe. That's one thing that we'll have to do. So the ideal thing would be to have the biodigester right next to the bathroom window. And then the gray water will stand next to it. That will make things a lot more efficient. The other way that this works is as we fill this with water, then the overflow goes into the collector, and as you can see, we've collected some gas. We have another system here for collecting gas. The gas starts by coming out of the sacred cow's uh, rear end, if you like, and it goes into this container here, 110 liter container. And as it goes, it pushes water out and fills this. We fill this tank with gray water. And when we want to use the gas, we just open this valve. And then the water pushes the gas from the bottom up and out and down to the refrigerator or to the kitchen sink. Overflow gas from this goes into here. So we can capture gas in two different areas. This is a 100 liter container. This is a 200 liter container, just an old trash can. And this is 100 liters of water, of used water. That used water will force the 100 liters of gas out when we use the gas. So that's another thing that we do. And then we have the old incinerator is out here. This is the least expensive model. It's a 0.45 horsepower engine and it grinds most of the food waste, but it will not grind the pits of the avocado or the corn cobs or bones. But it's much less expensive, and we were using that successfully for a long time before we got the new incinerator. What we're going to do now is we're going to run the refrigerator off of the biogas, so I'm putting a couple of bricks just to give a little bit of gas pressure, and I open the valve here, and So this is our gas line coming down from the gas collector on the porch. Come on into the garage where we're doing the experiments. <clears throat> in Cairo, we bought this metal tube with a valve on it for doing these experiments. Uh, any valved uh, metal tube would work. And you can see when I turn on the gas. Yeah, well, that's a good one. 
Now we don't need a large flame for the refrigerator. In fact,